this would be just to let you tell us what you want to tell us, and then if we have any questions at the end to fill in. Is that fair? Yes. Well, you don't remember when the call was, but you remember the call. Yes, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I honestly could not tell you the number of calls, the length of the calls, the time of the calls. Okay. Would you like some? Well, would, you, would you like to just start? I think a lot of this, I, I will tell you that I think a lot of y'all's trouble is getting out of him as he's testifying from memory. And y'all yeah. know the details of his life. I, I understand that. that. I, so I don't think we actually need to go through the time. I think because I don't want you to think we're putting you in a situation where we're trying to trip you up at this no. point. Is that accurate, Absolutely sir? not. Absolutely. I want you to, right. could you so, maybe diagnose the first call that that would be an interest to us, not the time or anything about what happened. I think there was only one conversation that is what you're looking for. Okay. 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 And it was the last conversation. Okay. And it would it be safe to say there wasn't much talking after that? No. No, that was the end of the okay. conversation. Okay. And so, is that the last time you've spoken with her? No, no. no we I talk to her. Yeah. I talk to her every, still, I talk to her every day. But again, every day was just yeah. every so, day. So yeah. when that, let's talk about that conversation that, 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 that you feel was. So probably the last minute of the last conversation, <laughs> she said, Gary is in the burn pile. No, she said, he is in the burn pile. And I said, what? And she said, he's in the burn pile. And I said, do not say another word and do not tell me anything. I do not need to know. Okay. And that is everything period. that you've discussed with her. Period. She didn't say anything about nothing before, nothing since. When I talked to her after that, there was it was, you know, Has it was just like it was portrayed to y'all, we're looking for Gary and Did Paul. she say, okay, so there was a, we ain't gonna get the time, so there was a, ser there was a couple of phone calls that, uh, there was a couple of phone calls that was later than usual for y'all that night. Did she say anything about anything that was going on inside the house that night? Nothing between her? I mean, no, I mean, like I said, what we talked about, and I could not tell you any specific, other than the horses were out and uh, she did tell you that. Yeah, that, that she had been out after the horses, and okay. uh, now I know. Was, we, was, you think that's why she was that her excuse for calling you that late? Probably she was up, she was awake, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't think anything about any of it until she said that, and then that's when I said. So I. I want you to know, though, I don't want you to think I'm tripping you up. If there's anything else, you know, this statement that you just gave us, in my opinion, is very damning for her, so there's no reason in holding back at this point. If no, then that we, that's know, what this last... If I'm going to give an ounce, I'm going to give a pound. That was okay. all of it. That was all of that it. That was everything that she said that had anything to do with whatever happened. But that's pretty, I mean... And I don't you know admit what happened. Good. Yeah, well, I don't know when happened or what yeah. happened. And here's the thing. At the time that that statement was made, you got to remember, he wasn't even reported as missing. I agree with you. Right? Right. Me and him going to step out and talk. Yeah, sure. One second, okay? You don't want us to step out. No, I appreciate no, we're with you. I appreciate us getting to this point. But I'm going to step outside and talk to him. Just, well, that's, that's your... Just for the sake of attorney and client, our recorders are still going. Okay, okay. thanks. Yes, sir. <laughs> There's a lot of people up here that wouldn't have reminded <laughs> me of that. surreal yeah I've had things in this business that happened to me and while they were happening I thought this can't really be happening yeah. kind of like yeah 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 I just couldn't you know I was like what we're not holding back at this point no I, I, that's it that's enough well that's it that's all there is I mean did, did you did you feel like any of this was built in Looking back on it, those conversations. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, no, I didn't. I didn't see. I didn't see that coming at all. One, literally, 
maybe I showed up. I was just in shock because I was like, you know. That would have been that would have been a couple of days after that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would have been if she talked to you on Wednesday morning or Tuesday night and they showed up at Friday, Friday night. Friday night. During day two of deliberations in the Melody Ferris trial, the jury asked to listen to several recordings. Now, for those hoping for a quick guilty verdict, I understand where you're coming from. Some might see the evidence as overwhelming against Melody. But one thing I do appreciate about this jury is that they're taking their time, carefully reviewing the details. I honestly believe they'll reach a unanimous guilty verdict, and I'd be very surprised if they don't. Let's be real, juries have shocked us before. One of the most unforgettable examples was the Casey Anthony case, where many were confident she would be found guilty, only for the jury to deliver a surprising verdict. That memory is a reminder that while a verdict may seem obvious to us, there's always a chance for unexpected outcomes. That said, I believe Melody is guilty, and I think this jury will find her guilty too. And if that's the case, I appreciate even more that they're being thorough and have taken the time to request these recordings. Imagine if on the first day of deliberations, the jury had come back with a quick guilty verdict after only about an hour of discussion. It would have been easy for the defense to argue that the jury hadn't done their job properly. They could have claimed the jury rushed to a decision without sifting through all the evidence, that maybe they just wanted to get home or wrap up the trial quickly, especially with Halloween just around the corner. And after a lengthy three-week trial, who wouldn't be tired and eager to move on? But by taking the time they need, this jury ensures that no one can question their dedication or accuse them of being hasty. A guilty verdict in this case, where the jury has carefully reviewed evidence and recordings, will only strengthen the verdict's credibility. The defense won't be able to suggest that the jurors were lazy or failed to do their duty. Instead, they'll have to face a verdict that's been reached methodically and thoughtfully, one that's more difficult to dispute. That brings me to another thought. I can't help but wonder what must have been going through Melody's mind as she sat there listening to those recordings again, fully aware that the jury specifically requested them. She must know that these recordings are pivotal, and that if the jury is taking time to revisit them, it's likely because they're weighing them carefully against her. If she's guilty, she probably realizes that this deliberate pace only increases the chances that the jury will find her so. But then again, as I said before, we can never be completely sure, juries have surprised us before, sometimes delivering verdicts that make us question their reasoning. In this case though, I think the jury is handling things well. They're making sure they understand every detail before reaching a decision, and in doing so, they're preventing any potential arguments that they didn't fulfill their duty. Taking extra time to go over key pieces of evidence, like these recordings, makes their eventual verdict more likely to withstand scrutiny, regardless of what side the verdict favors. There's also something to be said about the integrity of the judicial process here. When a jury requests to hear recordings or review evidence, it demonstrates that they're not just passively sitting through the trial, they're actively engaging, questioning, and trying to piece together the truth. This is exactly what we hope to see from juries in any trial, especially in cases as serious as this one. Now, let's open up the discussion. I'd love to hear from you, what do you think about this jury's approach so far? Here are a few questions to consider. Do you feel that a jury taking its time to review evidence is more likely to reach a just verdict? Are there any cases that come to mind where you felt the jury didn't take enough time, and if so, what impact did that have on the outcome? And finally, what do you think is going through Melody's mind as she listens to these recordings again? And that brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching, take care, and stay safe.